Hi there, I'm Michael. Um, today I've got a, a few things to do. Uh, I think I'll start with the, the case swap. So what happened is, um, let me get my, my phone going. Somehow, um, not exactly sure what exactly went on to, uh, to, for this to happen on this uh, desktop computer here, the, uh, the glass got cracked, the, you know, the glass here. And um, it actually was brought to me with glass in the bottom of it. I've got a video of, uh, of me shaking the glass out. There's still a little bit in there. So what I'm going to do is take everything out of this computer case and put it in a, a new uh, Corsair 5000D Airflow case. Uh, I already hooked up the computer and made sure that it basically functions. It booted into Windows just fine. Um, but yeah, let's get, uh, let's get my phone going here. And when I say my phone, it's uh, it's how I do uh, first-person perspective. It's basically my camera. Oh wow, that got that got twisted. Sorry, y'all are going all over the place, aren't you? Okay, I got caught up. There we go. All right. So yeah, let's take everything out of the old case first. So it's a 6th generation Core i7 processor. Uh, I don't remember how much RAM. It's got four sticks in there. And the graphics card, I want to say, is a 1060. Yeah, it's a GTX 1060. And then a couple of solid state drives and a hard drive, which is right here. I had taken it out before I took it outside and shook it. I just left it in the bottom of the case other than that. Alright, so let's disconnect the graphics card. And this thing has a, quite the, uh, the sag to it. You can see it right there. Um, the card doesn't weigh that much. I'm, I'm thinking it was probably dragged down a little bit by the where the cable is. Um, in the new case, I'm going to see about maybe running the cable from the top up here, so it's, it'll kind of suspend a little bit better. It's not really a problem when graphics cards bend like that. It's not likely to uh, to break the connection on the motherboard. It's just, it looks bad. Um, yeah, so whenever you're disconnecting power from a, a graphics card, you have to squeeze this little thing here as you wiggle it out. So it's kind of like that. It grips onto a piece of plastic right there. Okay, the screws are on the outside. Pizza. Hey, and Arnold, and Tech Love, and Mama, and Chris. How y'all doing? And the other thing you have to do to get graphics cards out is a little eject thing here. You have to press at the kind of at the base of the slot. And kind of wiggle it out. itself is got a little bit of a downward bend to it. Slight though. Yeah. Okay. Solid state drives down here at the bottom. So let me get these out. Captive screw and then you slide out. This side of cable has a little thing you have to squeeze in order to let it come out. Through here and out. Oh, yeah. This one has a has one on the underneath side. 
gonna reach under to get to. Okay, you going up that way? Cool. Uh, cable, cable, cable. We'll reuse the cables. These are the, the front connectors for power button, power LED, reset switch, and uh, another LED, hard drive activity LED. And this is for the front panel audio. It's called HD audio. USB 3 is here. Oh, that's not going to come out easy, is it? Sometimes these kind of get stuck. Oh, okay, they wouldn't as bad as I thought. Every once in a while, um, this little plastic bit will come with the, uh, with the cable. It's not really that big of a problem. You just have to be careful about putting it back. All right, uh, that's 24 pin, eight pins up here. These are power supply cables. Stick those through the back. That's uh, a tight fit. Okay, I'm gonna leave that there. Uh, got a chassis fan, which is probably this one coming up and connecting to the motherboard. Cooler we're going to leave alone. RAM we're going to leave alone. Uh, let's just go through and undo all the screws in the motherboard. Uh, CFW. Yes, happy Sunday to all. Absolutely. Okay. Now I'm just taking out the screws that are holding the motherboard in. Some down here. up against the case and the RAM. I'm not sure if I want to reuse this fan or not. I'm going to look and see what uh, what uh, fans come in the new case. I should have the motherboard free though. Let's see if it comes out. Oh, you know what? Looking straight down at this, it did put quite the bend on the uh, the 16x the top 16x PCI Express slot. Let me see if I can get an angle. I can't look at the screen and do this at the same time, but hopefully y'all can see that. So yeah, that's not great, but shouldn't be an issue. I've only seen a few times where um, the PCI Express 16x slot actually got ripped off the motherboard. else from in here other than the power supply all right 24 pin through and okay yeah This has got a, a plate that goes on the power supply and then that goes into the case. Go ahead and take all the screws out. We're not gonna need the plate. You'll see what I mean by a plate in a second here. Wow, more like 10 or 15 seconds. Oh, battery on my screwdriver is going bad. Oh, come on. Need to swap out the battery. Yeah, so there's the there's the plate. It's like that because the power supply has to slide in from the back. glass moving around a little bit in there. Didn't get it all. Uh, okay. 
there's a there's a connector that's still in one of the power supply cables. Uh, so I'm cutting a little. So that's, that's almost certainly a fan. They all come out now. One more. Another fan. in here. Keep them here to come out. Don't really want to open up the, the power supply. It being in there is not the worst thing. It's not electrically conductive as far as I can remember. It is tempered glass, so it's not going to be like super sharp or anything, but I also wouldn't want to step on it. I need vacuum. There it is. Okay. <sighs> Let's see. Uh, I'll just set that in there. Uh, we won't need to reuse these screws. The new case will come with them. And I managed to cut myself. <clears throat> yeah, right there. Oh. Two different spots. I'm being a vampire over here licking my wounds. everybody doing uh, good morning sir what happened to your yesterday PC build it went well um, I, I couldn't I couldn't do the entire uh, build on stream did I ran out of time but uh, I need to stop myself from bleeding This looks like the main culprit. Uh, but yeah, it, um, see what uh, what did I end up doing? Um, I stress tested it for a couple of hours. Oh, and the, um, the question of whether it was a problem with the front of the case, the one yesterday, uh, instead of like here it's mesh where the, the airflow is just gonna go right in, it had a, a flat front. When I put that flat front on, 
the, uh, the temperatures jumped about six degrees Celsius. Not great, but okay. Um, I think it went up to 78 degrees Celsius, but that was under an extreme um, uh, torture test on the CPU and the GPU at the same time. It's okay. It's not great, but it'll work. And they also did not ask my opinion on uh, on what to buy. They just did it. So on this 5000D, it was a couple of thumb screws, and then this little pull thing here like to come off. Interesting. Does it come off? Yes. Good. Well, this is great because it'll hide any kind of uh, cable mess that ends up <laughs> happening back here. That's nice. Uh, let's see. Looks like this could come off too. So if you wanted to, you could add fans here. Okay. And there's there's openings right here for air to come in. So air could come in that way and kind of I guess flow across? What is this? Huh. Okay. Alright. What is this loose thing? Some kind of a shroud. Huh. Where the power supply is supposed to go. I'm not sure what that does. So far I haven't seen the manual. Lots of straps for cables. It's nice. Uh, let me get some of this stuff out of the way. Um, all right, bags of screws. Washers, coarse threaded screws, little tiny screws that are fine threaded, not very many of them though. Extra risers and some kind of a really monster looking riser. I wonder what that's for. Oh, and a uh, USB 3.0 uh, 90 degree adapter. Hmm. I don't think I've seen one of those before. And then screws for adding extra fans, which we we might do. Oh, you know what? This right here, this 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 riser-looking thing, appears to be one of these. Huh. If anyone would like to look up the manual for the 5000D airflow, and let us know in chat what this. Uh, plastic shroud is about. Uh, oh, you know what? I need the IO shield that goes right here for the motherboard. in the case so what this does is the um the back part here it kind of fits over like that so that gives you your orientation so you come over here and you kind of push it into the corners 
this one is pretty cheap. It's got a lot of sharp edges on it, so I'm trying to be extra careful with it. Push the corners in. Check it from the outside. Looks good. All right, let's see about getting the, the motherboard in there. So the risers mostly will be in the right spot. These here might be extra for this motherboard. Yeah. So the risers raise the motherboard off the back of the case and you put screws through these holes. So one, two, that's one and two. One, two, one and two. One, two, one, two. Okay, so these risers aren't necessary. I can go ahead and take them out. Where is my little, yeah. This thing rolls around. So yeah, this goes over the riser and then it just adapts it to a Phillips head. Wouldn't really be a problem for them to be there. It would be okay. They just don't really need to be there. Where it would be a problem is if there was a riser like right here and there wasn't a spot on the motherboard for a hole to be. The risers are metal, so it could come in contact with a component on the back and short out the board. These risers, all three of them, are off to the side of the motherboard, so again, it wouldn't be a, a problem for them to be there. They just don't need to be. All right. So the motherboard will just fit right in here. Kind of push it back, and it just fell in. This one, on this case, this uh, riser is not actually a riser. It's a little pin that sticks through the motherboard to kind of hold the motherboard in place. So then next thing to do is to look through the holes in the motherboard for the riser and it usually needs to be adjusted a little bit. You just want the riser to be kind of in the center of the hole. And it's not unusual for it to spring back a little bit. So I'm going to just kind of push it back and hold it so it's straight. And then I'm going to put this screw all the way in and screw it tight. That should keep the rest from, keep it moving so the rest are in, in, the, in the right orientation good. The rest I'll just do partially. And then once I have them all in, I'll tighten them down. And we have an extra here because in the old case, there was an actual riser for it to go in here on the motherboard. Okay, but tight. Oh, come on. in. Let's do the power supply. Okay, so it will go through here. And it's going to be a little bit tight. There's three and a half inch slash two and a half inch drive bays right here. Sometimes you can move these like towards the uh, towards the back. Let's see if that's an option. Well, those do 
not want to come out. All right, well, let's see if we can get the power supply in there the way it is. Uh, this is a non-modular power supply. Dust on the outside. So whenever you're putting the power supply in, you want the uh, the power supply fan to be towards the bottom, as long as there's plates down here where there's um, vents. Now it's let's see. How are we doing on? Yeah, that'll be okay. I should be able to put some of these extra cables kind of back in here and also back under here just to get them out of the way. We'll use these coarse threaded screws to screw in the power supply. need four of them. on a journey under the desk to get a fresh battery for this. What are y'all talking about? Ah, you're going to move your stuff, uh, your son's stuff over to a new case, Tech Love Mama. Cool. Um, I, 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 uh, Brutal Pizza, I haven't looked at my email yet, but when I do, um, I'll, I'll, uh, add you as a moderator. Audio on the quiet side, huh? Um... Yeah, maybe it is. It does look a bit low, doesn't it? I've, I've got a, a little thing here that, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but Mike Ox, it's only at like half. That's weird. Uh, let's see. I'm going to mess with the audio a little bit. It might go out. What about if I move the mic closer? Even then, it's like, hmm. Microphone's turned all the way up. Okay, I've got a gain filter on it and a limiter. Let me turn up the gain a little bit. <coughs> testing, testing. A little more. Testing, testing. Wow, a lot of gain. So the um, the volume should be okay. How does it sound otherwise? Like is it uh, is it peaking or does it sound distorted or anything at the moment? Sounds good. Much better. All right, we're gonna go with that. I did plug in another device yesterday to the front of the streaming computer. Maybe that screwed with the volume. Ah, uh, see. All right. Find a place to put another screw. There we go. Uh, let's see. Another one here. And then the fourth one I'm thinking is here. I can't quite see it. Yeah, there it is. All right, tighten them down. Right. Power cables. Four plus four makes eight, and that goes up here, plugs into the motherboard. Let's go ahead and do that. one of four and there's two a 
This is for the graphics card, which I said we were going to try and put through kind of the top of the graphics card to maybe help suspend it. Oh, this thing needs to come off. That is going to be in the way. So this is nice, so it covers up any um, view of the cables, but it needs to come off at least temporarily. How do we do that? Eh, it's metal. Ah, there's thumb screw there. Let's see. Really? Do you have to do that? I'm going to try taking this piece off. It's not needed in the current build. You come out now? Hmm. It's looser. Something else is holding it. Did anyone find the 5000D manual? Uh, let's see. My hand? Um, I usually get cut up when working on computers. That's it's a scrape from somewhere. I don't usually feel it whenever it happens, so it's not always obvious what caused it. Is there a screw on the bottom? Let's see, no, there is not. How do you take this off? doesn't help that it's black. It's so difficult to get enough light on a black case. I'm really just not seeing where this is. Maybe these cables are covering it up. See if this makes it loosen up a little. Nope, that did not help. All right, let's look up the ca the case manual. D airflow manual. Oh, 
Oh wow, that just jumped me right into it, didn't it? Removing the cable bar. Oh, okay. So this was just kind of loose in the case, but it's meant to go down at the bottom right here. Okay, well, that'll just go right back in when we're done. Um, not sure what that is. And we're into French. Okay. <clears throat> Is it calling this the cable bar? This right here? I wouldn't call that a cable bar. I would call that a, a fan slash radiator mount. I just want it out of the way. I don't care what it's called. All right, that's not very helpful. Okay, Steve did a, a review of it. <laughs> there I am, uh, live on YouTube, trying to figure it out. The front. Steve mostly talks about stuff, though. Um, I don't know that they're going to show the removing of... Oh, there we go. Okay, so it shows him removing the panels, but not how they came out. Although, it looks like there's a... That one I did take out that didn't seem to do much, I think it does need to come out along with the others in order to get this out of the way. So it's this guy here, and one in the middle along with one on the bottom. All six holding them in. I got that going. I have one down here. Come here, screw. Let's see. Sorry, I forgot to move back to POV. 
y'all screaming at me in chat about it. <laughs> I think y'all can see now. Okay. So yeah, there was a screw at the uh, at the bottom down here. So this is moving a little bit. I'm not really concerned about this. It's really about this guy here. It's just how do you get to that screw without removing this? Okay, that's captive. Here's another one. Oh, come on. Uh, all right, what about now? Oh, come on. It's moving. Feeling a little loose. There we go. So it was two captive screws on the underside here. <sighs> okay, and I did that in order to stick the graphics cable through here. Like that. And that should be a good suspensory point for the graphics card. So it'll come like that and hopefully hold it a little better. 24 pin. Get this guy up here. Like that. Shouldn't need any Molex. This is all Molex and then a floppy. Probably just stick these through here. Kind of out of the way. What else we got? Another for graphics. Don't need that. And then a couple of Molex. So I think we'll probably just leave those loose for now. Um, the solid state drives can go right here and the hard drive can go down here. I think we'll do that. Yeah, let's go ahead and get this off. Cannot see chat for nothing with this huge case. Uh, let's see. Uh, hey Zulu. Yeah, I'm, I'm always trying to be careful about cutting myself, but it, it keeps happening. The thing is, I'm getting up there in age, and I know from, you know, just watching my parents that the older you get, the, the easier it is to get cuts and, um, and also uh, bruises. So it's not going to get any better with age. So brutal pizza, you th you think you heard um, glass in the power supply? It's possible I, I missed uh, I missed a shard, but it'll be sitting at the bottom and it's not conductive anyway. So uh, I'm I'm not worried about it as long as it's not like sitting where the fan is. When I turn the computer on, it starts vibrating the fan. If that happens, I'll take it out and try and shake it out. Maybe take the um, the guard off the fan. Maybe it'll fall out easier that way. Hey Nick. Yes, all all the likes, all the follows, right? Smash the bell and all that. Alright. Guess we can deal with these. Okay, so we got a USB C connector. No chance that's gonna plug in where on you know on the motherboard. So USB C, that this is what it looks like, and there's a there's a spot on newer motherboards, motherboards, at least kind of a mid-range to high-end motherboards will have a spot to put this. Um, without this connected, the USB C port is not going to work. You can get um, PCI Express add-in cards that will allow you to plug this in. You put that in into the motherboard into one of the uh, expansion slots, plug this into that, and then you've got USB C. I doubt they'll care. Uh, audio. So this guy will come across here and probably go up through here maybe. Yeah, and plug into a spot on the motherboard. It's usually right down here. 
Yep, I can see it. It's called uh, AFP or HD audio. And there's a missing pin. If you look on the connector right here, there's no pin there, and there's it matches up with no pin on the motherboard. So, a matter of plugging it in, that's it. Okay. What else we got? USB 3.0. I believe I saw it right there. Yeah. Let's go ahead and plug in the 24 pin power. 24 pin power in. And now, if y'all if y'all can see this, but the without the uh, the extra length and the um, the place to, to screw more in, it's kind of on the floppy side here. It moves around. It's okay. Let's see. Go through up here to come down and plug in the USB 3.0. And this has a little bit of a plastic. Um, little thing right here next to my thumb that matches up with a notch on the motherboard so you can't put it in backwards. Get it on there and push. Oh come on. Don't tell me you're, you're bent. They are slightly bent. Let's see if I can get these guys to go in with a little wiggling. your home. Don't you want to go to your home? Yeah, the ones right here are kind of out of alignment. They're high. So reach in and push them down. And I'm just using a, a Phillips head screwdriver to do this. Low, low. That's pretty close. These are a little, a little high. All right, that may work. Mm, I think that got it. in. Yeah, it's in. Cool. Alright, so what I'm going to do is take the two two and a half inch SATA drives out of these brackets from the old case. And we're going to move them over. <laughs> they only had one hole. One screw holding that one in. With solid state drives, it really doesn't matter. They don't. Uh, they don't care about vibration being moved around a little bit. But let's see if we can come up with an extra couple of screws here. So these tiny ones here. Yeah, these will work. These brackets go with the old case and put those back there. Now let's see, let's do this guy and this guy. Nice. A little dusty. Clean. Dusty. So I want the connectors to be at the bottom. So we'll do that. How many screws they get us? I think there's enough. We need eight to to fully like get this thing. Get these two drives in, and that's how many we got. Yes, good. Yeah. 
Yeah, Rule Pizza, I, I don't like the, the design of the USB 3.0 either for that reason and the fact that a lot of the times the, uh, the plastic piece comes off the motherboard whenever you try and disconnect it. Um, between that and RGB connections, they, they should really have thought of that a little bit more. That went in sideways. That was cross-threaded. Back it out. Put it back. Oh, shouldn't have tightened that down yet. I think we're okay, though. Cross-threading means that it's not in straight. You can get it to go in, but then it's difficult to, it's difficult to put in and it's difficult to take back out. Uh, so, let's see. That good? Yeah. about these cables so we got a straight and a straight okay so we're, I'm gonna use this one for the hard drive because it's gonna be up under here and it's better for a, a 90 degree connector to be down there 90 deg deg degree connector right here would be a problem okay so go ahead and get this guy in here SATA, and it's really easier to do this outside of the case. Oops. Oh, it was backwards, or upside down. So that, and we'll plug in this guy. This is also a 90. I think this will be okay, though, if I kind of put a bend on it. And it's upside down. Oh. Whenever you look at it, it's L-shaped. See that right there? It matches up with a an L-shaped part of it here. So they can't, can't be put in backwards. All right, so that's in. And we'll stick that right there up. And in. And this guy will come over here and plug into this one. That other cable. There. And then like that. All right. Let me take our SATA cables, SATA data cables. We'll kind of go up and look where they are on the motherboard. Right we'll down here. Okay, so I'm going to go into these guys right here. There's another four here, but those right there will be good. Yeah, there's three there. So, kind of across through here. Like that. Ooh. Are those SATA? One of them is something else. I, I can't remember what that's called. It's a, 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 um, a shorter one. Or more narrow ones. So those two will go there, and we'll put the the ninety. Drag this through for the hard drive, and we will put this cable right here. Like that. Yeah. 
All right, hard drive. So I took this out of the, the computer before I took it outside and shook the glass out of it. drive caddy. So these are great. There's little pins here that go into the screw holes. You kind of get one side in like that. You can bend the other side around and get those pins in. Alright. Let's see. SATA and the case fan. The case fans have this uh, fan hub where you can plug in multiple. The two of them are already plugged in. There's one at the front and one at the uh, one at the front and one at the back because it's backwards. So this needs power as well. Without that, the fans will not spin. This guy. Oh, you know what? Let's do this. I'm actually going to put this up through the rest of the stuff. Kind of like that. Let's go ahead and plug in the drive. So, SATA power. That's upside down. Okay, I'm going to do this one. SATA power. And SATA data. And this is the 90. Are you upside down? Yes, you are. Okay, so that will go in like that. That does not look right. It's like going at an angle. Oh, it, the uh, the connector is too wide. Let me go grab another cable for them. I'm not going to fight with this stupid thing. Did you hear me? I'm not going to fight. There we go. Let's try and find the black cable anyway. Have it match, and that thing is going in the trash. This 90 is in the correct direction, even. Alright. In. Slide that bad boy in. This will come up and connect to the fan controller. Kind of go up like this with it. In. And then take this guy up through here. Actually, nope, down, up through here, and plug him in. up a little. Actually, I'm going to get it all working, then I'll come back and tidy up. <laughs> but it's mostly together. Um, we just need to add the graphics card, really. Okay. Oh, graphics card will go here into the Slightly bent PCI Express 16X, and it's a two-slot card, so these two plates need to come out. Ah, 
how's everybody doing in chat? I'm sorry I can't see y'all unless I do this. Uh, <laughs> I, I think the case will be okay. It's it's more than they needed for sure, but it'll it'll work. It is working. I mean, it's all it's just about all in there. So graphics card. The face plate goes to the left of the motherboard's edge. Kind of just over the slot and push. Yeah. Set right there. And put these guys back in. These you just snug down, you don't seriously tighten them. Okay. Right, so there's that bend to the graphics card. I'm hoping to do something with the cabling to hold it. Oh, is it? That's a tight one. Okay, so this, this cable just straight up isn't very long. It's coming from down there. I'll try and cinch it. So it needs it needs eight. So it's six plus two that you mash together, and then eh, it's not going to be enough. the The cable is just not long enough to make it all the way down there and turn and plug in. So it's going to have to go more down here. That's okay. It'll still work. Messing up the grommet. The rubber grommet popped out. tight. I uh, got one of them in, I think. Could use a, a third, third hand to do this. Okay, I think that'll work. Yeah, all right. So, oh, put the, put the cable through. So we're going through this guy. Plus two and in and be like a twisty tie right there. I'm on the right size. Yeah, that'll work. Let's turn it on. Put that on the floor. HDMI. Power. Let 
mouse and keyboard. Uh, power. Yep. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I did not hook up the uh, the front ports, the front cables. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I bumped. I bumped the microphone, y'all. Sorry about that. It's not gonna power on without the button. Right, where are they at? There they are. Okay. We also have a fan connector here, which is going up to the fan controller. That makes sense. Okay. Let's look and see what we got under here for fans. Don't see any at the bottom of the motherboard. I'm looking for a fan header to plug this thing in. There's chassis fan. That'll work. Alright, so this guy will come up through here and plug into chassis fan. Right there. Okay. Back to buttons. Do we just have buttons or what? Power switch. Power LED. Okay, so there's no reset. Yes, there is a reset. There's where is the reset cable? Okay, there's three here. It's probably just under, back behind something I can't see. Yep. All right. Uh, there we go. Oh, come on. Okay, so we want to go down, kind of behind all this stuff. Probably should hook this stuff, these uh, these up to the motherboard a little sooner in the build. Might try doing that in the future. But come up under here, I think, for the motherboard. Let's see. Yeah. Down through there. And up through here. Yeah, I should have done this before I plugged the, the graphics card in. So these guys We'll plug in here. Let's see. Let's do the LED first. And these are power LED, so there's a positive and a negative. You can see it right there. The positive needs to go to the left of the motherboard. And it's the top two leftmost pins on the F panel. You can I can see it written on the motherboard. You can also find the locations in the, the motherboard manual, which I don't have. But that's okay. Reset goes at the bottom right too. And power switch at the top right to okay all right now it'll power on you'll power on won't you buddy because all the drivers are going to be there already. But Ethernet, power, yay! Let's see. So I'll also take off this tape. And this appears to be holding down, yeah, it's a, a dust filter. And you just go right back on and down. Okay. 
switch my TV or my screen here to HDMI, and yeah, there's a login screen. Yep, okay, and I've got his pin, and let's see, actually, let's, let's give my phone a break and plug it into power for a little bit. Surely the battery is, oh, 48%, that's not horrible. You know what? That's wrong. Um, hmm. Okay. Let me look at my phone. I could have sworn that was correct. Some reason it's not letting me type. The keyboard's working because I can tab around. All right, well, let's give it a restart. See if it behaves better after. Hmm. <clears throat> weird. It went to the recovery screen like I was holding down shift. Okay, coming back on. Delete got me into BIOS. Oh, actually kind of needed to come in here, in here anyway. Let's turn on his XMP so the RAM runs at, uh, at its proper speed. Alright, F10. And OK. Sorry, y'all couldn't see what I was doing. I just went into the BIOS and uh, turned on the XMP profile to get the RAM running at uh, the speed it's capable of. Okay, it's letting me type now. Okay. Did I misremember the password? Oh, I did. There we go. Right. All right. So I really just need to make sure the drives are seen. Um, this PC. Ooh, he's down to six. 7 gigabytes on his solid state drive that he has Windows on. That's not good. Wonder if he knows. Uh, let's run a, a cleanup, disk cleanup, and see if we can get rid of some 
some temporary files or something. Clean up system files. So I did start and I typed in disk and disk cleanup comes up. And then I click to run um, uh, check for administrative only type of stuff. And this should give me like Windows Update and things like that. Yeah, so we can clean up Windows Update. And looks like that's all we can do. I don't want to get rid of his drivers. Could free up the, the recycling bin, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to get rid of his thumbnails. It's not worth the, uh, the, sa the space savings. Okay, well that'll clean up a, a couple of gigabytes. I'll tell him. He probably just needs to, to move more stuff to uh, to the D drive. But um, this PC, first SSD, second SSD, and the hard drive. <laughs> he labeled it not SSD. I like it. All right, so that'll be good. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. I have a laptop to reinstall Windows on after a drive failure. And also, uh, I think I need to put in the new solid state drive. And he wants Windows 10. Uh, let's see. What happened with what happened with the data recovery? Okay, let me switch to there. So the um, the drive was failing; it wasn't coming up as a an accessible drive. I ran this mini tool power data recovery on it, and it was able to get all of his files back. I think, of course, won't be able to really tell that until he looks at them. But uh, so this is for a, a different client, not not the desktop we're working on, but says it got them all. It was 50.75 gigabytes worth of stuff. So that's good. Close out of that. And see if it'll let me eject the uh, the USB devices. Did one and didn't do the other. Come on, let me eject it. Let's try it again. There it goes. So yeah. Out. So this is this is for SATA drives and this is for NVMe drives, and but it's it's pretty straightforward. Uh, SATA based M.2 is in there, and then the client's SSD that failed is right there. It's just kind of in there loose. But yeah, that's. That's how you access NVMe drives and SATA-based M.2 drives, M.2 drives uh, from outside of a computer, or a way to do it. You, there's other ways you can you can connect them to your computer. All right, what are we doing? Disk cleanup. Um, POV. Okay, so when that gets done, we can see about cleaning up the cabling, and then we'll move on to the laptop. Sorry, I can't see chat right now. Um, let me switch something. All right, chat. Let's move you all over here to another screen. <laughs> we can't see nothing. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so that, that got done with the, the disk cleanup, I think. Still going, almost. Just about there. Let's see, what have I missed? Bike man. Uh, if you're having trouble getting getting fan uh, dust dust out of things, um, toothbrushes work work pretty well. Of that, along with blowing, um, you could always take it apart. I mean, it's uh, if you do if you do a, a a search on YouTube for the model number of your um, 
of your graphics card you're trying to take apart and the word disassembly, you'll probably find someone who does it and like shows you step by step. Oh, I can, okay, so Brutal Pizza says I can add him as a moderator right here. Add moderator, okay. Well, that was a whole lot easier than, than uh, going in and doing it the other way. Okay, so Brutal Pizza should be a, a moderator now in chat. And you all, I mean, people just like people in chat, I mean, y'all are almost always just great. No, no problems. Very little spamming and, you know, everybody's nice, you know, respectful. It's the spam bots that, uh, that need moderating for the most part. Oh, come on, Windows Update Cleanup, finish. Yeah, I wish I had known. Now I know. Just uh, anyone who wants to be a moderator that uh, that I trust, like Brutal Pizza, just add. Uh, while we're sitting here, I'm going to throw these extra screws in a bag. I don't think we need them. Oh, you know what? I do need some of those screws because I need to put back that... Uh, that piece. Uh, let's not put away the screws yet. Mm, excuse me. It'd be nice if the if the progress bar actually meant something, like it was really done. But most of the time, it's like an estimation. It really doesn't show the the true progress. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to move on to the laptop, and while I'm going to get the laptop, it'll probably get done. So this laptop, um, the client said that he was using it and he got all these pop-ups and he couldn't describe it very, I, I couldn't understand exactly what was going on, but uh, basically it got to a recovery screen and uh, it wasn't able to recover the install of Windows. And when I got it, it um, booted straight to a black screen. It wouldn't even try and go to Windows. Um, I opened up the laptop, got the M.2 NVMe drive out and uh, plugged it into uh, one of those adapters I showed you and I was able to get the files I think pretty sure we got them right. let's let's move there we go move the camera back here to my forehead. Okay, so the M.2 goes right here and I have a replacement. 
So this is a, a one terabyte Samsung M.2 NVMe drive. So there's a little notch right there that matches up with a bit of plastic. Oh, y'all, sorry. There, you know, yeah, you can see it. So little notch right here matches up with a bit of plastic on the connector. You put it in, usually it's a, a 30 degree angle. It kind of sits like that. And you push it down and you put the screw in. This is a little bit different on this Dell. So this is meant to sit over the top. And it kind of does... It's a tight fit. Oh, come on. I'm trying to move the speaker out of the way. Temporarily. What are you caught on? Oof, there goes my stomach. I'm hungry. So there's plastic bits right here that it has to kind of go over. A sliding, it's a sliding thing, so you take it out a little bit towards the front and then you slide it back. I don't like that. Okay, but speaker back in place and then two screws. Here. Oh, come on. Cooperate. Alright. Tight. And tighten down. So, if you need to replace the battery on this model, it's right there. It looks like two screws, and its cable comes and plugs into the motherboard. Wi Fi adapter is here, and these fail quite a lot. Uh, CPU and graphics are under here. There's the fan. Up here is the DC jack. So you would need to take the hinge off and lift it up in order to get that, and it plugs into the motherboard. And the RAM is under these things, and it's two 8 gigabyte sticks of RAM. So. Okay. Yeah, back together. Looks like this just goes right over the top. Push. The three screws back here are captive. They don't come out. Let's go ahead and get them. Get them in. It got done. We can shut it down. Down. Okay. And then the rest of the screws are here. I might reuse that tape. Brutal Pizza, you have COVID. Oh no. How's it going? Achy. Oh, temperature all over. I hope you feel better soon. I had COVID once. I don't recommend it. One star would not return.
not as bad the second time. I guess that makes sense because your body's had it before. It knows a little bit how to how to fight it off. Okay, so this computer could take Windows 11. He wants Windows 10. Which, that is his personal decision. Windows 10 is good. And the upgrade from Windows 10 uh, to Windows 11 is free. Anything beyond an eighth, uh, an eighth or beyond or newer Intel CPU, it just works. And it's just a, something you click to get going. Ryzen 2nd Gen can just get Windows 11 as well. So this thing came on for a second. Turned itself off. It's coming back on. Video. And he's got a password on here. Um, hang on. It's like a BIOS level password. All right, so it should, yeah. Okay, so it booted to the Windows 10 uh, installer I have on this USB. Next. Install now. And this, this computer will have a Windows 10 or Windows 11 key built into the BIOS, so it's not even going to ask me for a 25-digit um, code, because it's already got it. All right, custom, install. Oh, no drives. OK, so more than likely, the um, Windows 10 doesn't have a driver for the um, for the drive controller in here, so we need to go to the Dell website to get that. Let's see. Full cam. And I'll plug in my poor phone. So many cables. So many cables. you charge. All right, so we're we're needing a driver for the for the controller and it's going to be called uh, RST something on the Dell website. And this is an Inspron 7706. Spiron 7706 drivers. All right, good. Linked up. Oh, crap, that was an advertisement. Don't click on advertisements. 7706 2 and 1. Uh, no thank you for feedback. We want drivers for Windows 10. Driver. And we're looking for the Intel. Rapid technology storage driver should be it. Uh, download. Click it, let it run, and we will extract it because we don't need the entire thing. Let's put it in my downloads folder. Where are libraries? Where the hell is downloads? This PC downloads and make folder Intel RSTD I think is it yeah doesn't matter what it's called I call it Buffalo if I wanted to um, okay so that should have extracted I think yeah close downloads Intel RS bullshit 
production, Windows 10, whatever the hell that is. It's the F6 stuff. Ugh, so many. Uh, I don't know which one to get. Let's just get the whole thing and we'll, we'll direct it. So I'm right clicking on that. I'm gonna take the flash drive out of the laptop, plug it into my streaming computer here. And we're going to copy that folder over to it. You know, it may already be there. I have IR, um, IRST. It, it, it could be a different driver, though, for a, a different uh, chipset. So, yeah, let's copy that over. So it's either in F6, one of those, or it's it, this RSTI might be it. All right, let's eject that. Yeah, okay. Driver out. Let's see. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move the camera to a tripod. It doesn't need to be on my head right now. Just looking at a screen for a while. Cool. Right. You sit there. POV. Yeah. Okay. So USB going inside. And load driver. Browse. Alright, let's look in the F6. And it's probably in one of these. Let's try this one. Huh. It didn't prompt me about anything. Oh, you know what? It's not seeing it. This... No, it is. So, that did not do anything. Let's try this one. There we go. Intel Optane Memory Management Extension. Bullshit. Let's, let's give it a try. Okay, so it loaded, but it doesn't see the drive. Let's try a load driver and we'll load another one. F6, so we tried those two. What about this guy? No. What about this guy? No. Oh, you know, I'm not rescanning. But it, I shouldn't have to click rescan. Okay, F6. Let's see what's in here. Did we already try that one? No, we haven't tried this one. Okay, so Intel RST VMD. I'm not sure if this is right or not. Let's try it. Uh, hey, Rick. There it is. Okay. So it looks like I, I, I'm i sure I had a test version of Windows on here. I, I had this drive in another computer. I'm going to come in here and just delete everything. So what I'm doing is I'm just clearing off the uh, the partitions that were there before from a previous uh, test install of Windows. Delete. And so there it is. One terabyte. I'm going to hit next. And it will take care of doing the partitions for me. Holy F is right. You don't usually have to do that, Blackman0604. That's kind of unusual. Um, most of the time, the um, the drivers that are built into the Windows installer um, are good enough to at least see the drive and access it. And then it might go and get new drivers uh, after the fact, once you're in Windows. I don't think I'm gonna get a 4090. Um, I don't. I don't need to spend that kind of money on one. I don't game enough, and I don't have a monitor that can show that many frames anyway. The closest I can get is 1080p, 144 hertz on the um, the monitor to my right. And I'm pretty sure that would be overkill for just about any game. 
with the exception of like cyberpunk. I think cyberpunk would probably um, be able to give me enough frames. But no, that wouldn't either because it's 1080p video. I would I would probably need a 4K 120 hertz screen in order to take advantage of a 4090. You have a M2 SATA SSD. Is, um, is it just not seen at all when you plug it into the computer? Because um, the difference between SATA and NVMe um, M.2 is it either works or it doesn't. It's, uh, if, if the port on your computer supports um, SATA-based M.2, it'll work. If it's just uh, NVMe based M.2, it won't work, even though it fits. And some ports support both uh, SATA and uh, NVMe. All right, we're back to that boot password. Uh, Hatem, um, I don't know how the case, uh, how the glass cracked. It's not mine. None of these computers are mine. These are all client computers. These are computers that people bring to me to, uh, to fix. I don't know how it happened. It saw it, but it refused to install Windows 10 on it. Hmm. Was it seen in the BIOS and then not seen by Windows? Because if that's the case, you may just need that RST, um, what is it? RST something driver, I can't remember. It's the Intel rapid storage bullshit driver. You can't click next. Okay, well another thing that can happen is um, if there's a um, an incorrect type partition on it, um, it won't let you uh, install. So that's another thing. I'm going to remember that password by the time I'm done rebooting this damn thing. Yeah, there's there's basically two, two or different kinds of partitions that, that go on drives. Um, MBR and EFI, I think, is, is one way to, to differentiate them and call them. Um, and if your BIOS is set to boot to UEFI, but the um, the partition on the on the drive is an MBR, which is an older type, it won't work. Um, NTFS is the file system. That's different from the, the. Sorry, I've got a NAT in front of me. I'm not just crazy clapping my hands and stuff. Or maybe I am. Maybe the NAT's not really there. You never know, really. Uh, let's see. Right, so when you when you go to do it, um, if it won't let you click next, it's gonna have it's gonna have like an exclamation point. I'm gonna get one of these days. It'll have an exclamation point and the thing at the bottom that you click on and it'll tell you that it's in the wrong format. Yes, and it is a BIOS setting. So you would go into the BIOS and you would set the the drive controller to be either UEFI or Legacy. One of the two. Yes, MBR versus GPT. Thank you, Arnold. All right, I'm not gonna get this thing connected to the internet yet. We're gonna do a limited setup which just means it's not going to connect to a, um, a Microsoft account. And his account name was James before. We're going to stick with that. And I'm not going to put a password. He can add one later if he wants to. And turn off all the privacy stuff with the exception of diagnostic data and location. And note to Cortana. 
All right, making good progress here. Um, so I've got his um, his files on this. Um, SATA, oh, there it is. It's a there's a SATA based M.2 drive in here, which you can see right there, and it adapts it to USB. stuff transferring over. It says I couldn't do it because of an I.O. error. Okay, I.O. error um, is more of an indication of a problem with the drive itself. Yeah, means the the drive itself is is damaged in some way. Not like physically damaged as you can see, but it's got a problem. To verify that, you can get yourself one of the uh, the SATA-based um, M.2 um, adapters. They're like 20 bucks on Amazon. And uh, connect it to another computer. See if you can get anything off of it. Does rapid storage technology actually do anything useful? I'm not exactly sure what, what it does. Um, I mean, it's useful, sure. I mean, it it, it uh, allows your uh, your your drives to connect to the rest of the system, but I never really looked into it. Other because uh, it mostly just works. The only time you really have to deal with it is like this, where we had to go to the Dell website and download the driver for it. But most of the time, you don't even think about it. It just works, which is the best kind of technology, really. Okay, let's get on. Get on edge so that we, we can immediately go get uh, Chrome. Continue without signing in. All right. And, oh, highlight. Highlight. Number of taps to get this stupid thing to highlight. Okay. N-I-N-I-T-E dot com. Oh. And that won't work because it's not connected to, the, to, the, to Wi-Fi at the moment. But I will click and add it. Add the connection to my Wi-Fi. Alright, refresh. Uh, refresh. There we go. If you don't know Ninite, go check it out. Anything you see here on the screen is free. You just check it. You check as many as you want, come down here, click get your Ninite, and let it run. And it will download and install whatever you check. I usually just get Chrome with it. It's nice and quick. Okay, but I've got the drive connected. Let's go to, to File Explorer. And External SSD is what it's called. James folder. going to get his main folders. There's a few extras here. The app data folder. I'm not sure if I want to restore. I'm going to copy it separately to a, um, a file on the, on the desktop. A folder on the desktop. So, control C to copy. I'm just going to Rag app data to the desktop. And this PC, C, user, James, and we will control V and the rest of it. And that will take a while to get done. And the screen's flipping out and changing uh, resolution because it's getting drivers from Windows Update. Okay, Chrome got installed. More, more drivers being updated. Let's click Start and go to Settings. I think it's a 4K screen. It's really changing the size of stuff. It's a nice laptop. 
for an Inspiron, a Dell Inspiron, it's, it's actually really nice. It's more metal than plastic, which is what you want in a laptop. All right, so that's all the stuff it's getting, and it's going to get the BIOS, latest BIOS for the Dell as well. They call it firmware. It's BIOS. Mm. Yes, the, the newer ones mostly, and what, what you get in newer computers are NVMe, and that's what you, what you really want. Um, the SATA-based M.2s are pretty much out of style at this point. If you build a computer, um, usually some, if not all, of the, um, the M.2 ports on it are NVMe. Some of them also support SATA. And they, you can look it up in the manual. And also, sometimes on the motherboard, there'll be little indicators uh, written next to it, whether or not it's um, SATA, NVMe, or both, the M.2s. Okay, let's see. You're liking the Windows 11? I like it fine. Um, I've only got it on one computer in the house at the moment. It's, uh, it's on the, the living room computer. And um, once you get past the, um, or actually, the, the main thing uh, we didn't like about it is when you look at folders, it has kind of a spaced out view. But if you go up to the view at, in, uh, at the top of the folder, you can change it to compact view. And that makes it look like previous versions of Windows where things are just more you know tightly spaced. Uh, Mikey, um, getting into PCs, would I recommend any? Uh, I mean, if you want to buy one, either Dell or HP is what I usually go for. If you're building, um, you know, Asus motherboards are good. That's generally what I recommend. That's what most people bring me. Um, you can go Intel or AMD. They're, they're pretty well even right now. Uh, Intel just came out with, um, with their, their new processors and um, took away the performance crown from AMD but it's not by a whole lot and AMD has some some tricks up their up their sleeve they'll more than likely um, come out with something within six months and in the meantime they'll probably lower their prices to compete I haven't yet seen one of the, the new Intels or the new AMD stuff, the AM5 stuff. I, no one's brought me one yet. Uh, yeah, the, the, the context menus. When you right-click on something, um, it's, it's just everything you need is not there. You have to right-click on it, go down and click Show More, and then it shows you what you need a lot of the time. Okay, pending install and downloading stuff. Okay, it's still downloading stuff. It'd probably be a little while. Uh, can I move this thing out of the way? Um, let me see. If I move this out of the way, let's see. It doesn't need power for a little while. The battery should hold up. I'm going to disconnect power from it. I'm going to set the external SATA here. Uh, let's see if I can place to put this thing. Yeah, it'll go fine right over here. Come on, buddy. Set right there to do its thing. Okay, let's get back to the desktop. <laughs> yeah, the single core performance on the on the thirteenth gen is uh, is is the best in the industry right now, isn't it? Battery is up to sixty nine percent. Nice. Mm, okay. I'm just shutting down the desktop.
that mat is still here. All right, back to POV. You off? Yeah, it's off. So this is done. Just need to put it back together. Correctly, but it's hopefully close. All right, this is going to be a pain in the ass. There's little thumb screws, but not aligned right, it's not going to go in. I really wish this wasn't here, and I still haven't figured out what's the last bit holding it on. It really feels like there's something else down there, and definitely something right here. The manual is not a help. Yeah, there's not a screw there, even though there fe it really feels like there is. So dumb. see it. not going in. There's nothing in the manual about moving, removing this thing. And the manual is ridiculous. All it is is a bunch of pictures. It's not thorough at all.
Oh, it actually looks like it slides that way. like right there where my thumb is that it should slide toward the back of the case and then come out but this thing is not freaking moving Okay, maybe this needs to slide down a little bit. So I'm thinking that this right here and this right here need to go into this little indentation there and this guy here. Just really not want to cooperate. Aha! It slid. Okay, let's see if the thumb screws are going now. Uh, oh no, the porn, the porn, uh, porn bot is back. Bots. Okay, let me see what I can do about that. Okay, should be gone now. <sighs> okay, let's see if we can get these thumb screws in now. Corsair, I do not appreciate this design. I really don't. This is beyond dumb. Because it's, it's hanging up here. I mean, no wonder it was so difficult to get out. Yeah. I don't know if y'all can see this, but that is supposed to go in there. And you have to do both at the same time. I mean, not everyone has four arms. Don't buy this case unless you really need the extra space, because this is a pain in the ass. It's real close. It's real close to going. OK, 
Okay, I got the top one in. Okay, I think I got it. Yeah. Okay. Oof. That was a workout. All right, so that's good. Front looks good. Yeah. Okay, let's clean up the back. So these guys need to fit in there. And something like that. There's our USB-C that's not going to plug in anywhere because there's no place to plug it in on the motherboard. Turn off my flashlight before I forget. Okay. And let's see. Alright. Push that together. Close her up. Ah. I think Abby's home. Yeah. So. Hang on, y'all. I'll be back.
Okay, I'm back. Let's see. <laughs> Brutal Pizza went for coffee and the bots came. They knew. They knew they could sense it. Okay, so that goes there. screwed partially screwed fully screwed okay heavy bastard okay <sighs> yeah that looks nice they can use this case to uh, build just about any computer they want in the future too this is probably not going to be uh, incompatible anytime soon. All right. <laughs> the inside peel was most the way off of that thing. I'll leave the outside peel on for him. All right, and... Nice. All right, and that is done. The only other thing I have to do is replacing uh, the uh, the screen on a laptop. But I think I'm done for the day. That that case really took a lot out of me. <laughs> uh, and yeah, let's throw those in the bag. It'll be good to go. Ryu or Ryu, depending on what you believe or how you uh, pronounce it, right? Uh, a Gigabyte H510MH. Uh, don't know about that. With an i5-10400, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, 600 watt, I guess, power supply? Yeah. NVIDIA G4610? And should you go for a 1660 Super or a 2060? Where are you in the world, Ryu? Or Ryu? Or however you pronounce it. It really depends a lot on where you are in the world, I've found. Especially talking to people in chat. You now here, I'm, I'm in, you know, America. Pretty much good prices on most things. But around the world, I know it's hard to get stuff. And if you can't get it, it's expensive. UK. Okay, UK, you should be fine. Um, the the motherboard you chose is a bit a bit odd. Is it like super cheap or something? Let me see. Let's switch inputs. Where are you buying from? Is it a website you're trying to buy from? Move chat over there and bring up Yeah, uh, if if, if uh, a twenty a twenty sixty I, I agree would be better than a, a sixteen sixty super. Um, it also depends how much money you have to spend. Center. 
Andy, can I ask uh, why you didn't use cable ties on the cable management? I did a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't worry so much about uh, cable management on the back side of a case. Um, I, I do the, the very bare minimum. Um, that's, that's how I do it. You can't see it. I... Okay, so it's custom built from a local shop. Okay, so you already you already got it, and you're just deciding between graphics cards. The twenty sixty, yeah, it would be better than the sixteen sixty super. So a RTX twenty sixty versus a sixteen sixty super. Sites like this are great for, for figuring stuff out. So the 1660 Super is a little bit more expensive, 32 bucks, and this is kind of average, but it gets you overall 16% more performance. So effective speed is 26%. It really breaks it down for you. There's more than one of these. Um, Versus is another one that I've gone to. Yeah, gives you uh, you know different different viewpoints, along with links to buy, and they probably make money off of those links. That's probably how they make their how they make their money off of um, affiliate revenue or associate revenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I definitely um, agree with Blackman zero six zero four twenty sixty is the way to go. Yeah, uh, I understand, uh, Ryu. Um, they they made the choice for you. It's not a bad motherboard or anything. It's just it's a little bit on the low end. If you if if they had spent an extra twenty or thirty bucks, you could have got a nicer motherboard with like faster um, faster storage and you know a couple of extras. Mm-hmm. And we can actually do that search. Um, let's add uh, 16, I'm sorry, 6600 XT. Oh, and the word versus. Versus sometimes makes a difference. So between those two, the 6600 is a little bit more expensive. 7% uh, effective speed, average score is 16% higher. So it is it is faster. What you would get, however, with the um, the RTX um, brand, is the um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the AI upscaling, which could make a difference depending on the game you're playing. There's some extra features in the RTX stuff that the um, the AMD stuff doesn't have. But I mean, AMD has some has some uh, some similar features that might work better for you. Um, Either would be a good choice. AMD has has their own version of the AI um, up uh, upscaling stuff, and that that again comes down to the game you're playing. About um, you know, some games support one versus the other, and some support both. I think, but um, look at the look at the requirements of the game you want to play, or the game you're playing or the games you're playing. And that can help you also choose a graphics card. Yes, Andy, it is a it is a customer PC. Um, just about every computer you see me working on here is is customer stuff. Battlefield COD, okay. Yeah, so those games, um, I don't know if they support. Let me see. Let's do a search for uh, Call of 
Duty, so like Modern Warfare, Warfare Two, they they pretty much use the the same engine as as time goes on, and they upgrade. Um, and then it would be what is a what is Nvidia's AI upscaling called? I'm blanking. DLSS. DLSS. Okay, it looks like um, Modern Warfare does support DLSS. And what is what is AMD's called? AMD AI upscaling. Super resolution. So let's put super resolution on that. Uh, I don't see anyone talking about it. So it may not support it, or it may not support it yet. So if uh, if COD is more important to you, it may be the RTX way to go. RTX may be the way to go. And the other the other you mentioned is Battlefield. Um, so Battlefield, what, what 2042? FSR, huh? FSR. Okay, so it, it uh, Battlefield uh, Modern Warfare 2 and probably uh, continuing games uh, support all three. So DLSS is NVIDIA, FSR is AMD, and uh, XCSS is Intel. So it supports all those, that's good. And then let's put Battlefield 1942 FSR. Uh, FSR does not work at the moment in Battlefield. What about uh, DLSS? It does support DLSS. But um, Rio, do you see like the searches I'm doing? That that's how you how you would tell. Um, if the games that you that you play or you want to play support the extra features that a given graphics card has. I should really come up with a way to do poll. Um to do polls in here. Um I think Andy asked about the um the cable management I did. Does me not completely, totally cable managing uh, the backside of, of cases, does that bother any of you? Question mark? Like if, if your PC was like that on the backside, would it bother you? Blackman0604 says yes. <laughs> Would bother you. Okay. Maybe maybe that's something I'll, t I'll pay more attention to in future builds. Or I guess I could open this thing back up and, and fix it. ups and downs. Rio says as neatly as it can be.
Yeah, it, I, I definitely don't uh, don't like the zip ties. I don't like that approach. Um, I'm more likely to use uh, twist ties or, or straps, and the case did come with a lot of straps. Yeah, they're right over here. Where I can actually put the uh, put the extra screws. Ryu, I'm glad you're uh, you're getting stuff out of the stream. Yeah, everyone everyone chats chat is really helpful. I mean, you guys are great, especially when I've got my head in the computer and can't even see chat. Y'all are chatting away and helping each other. It's it's awesome. Let's see. Where is the stream? We're at two hours and 20, 28 minutes on the stream. I think I'll cut the stream there. I'm going to go get something to eat and uh, take care of myself. Hang out with uh, hang out with friends, right? Yeah, but everyone, thanks thanks for coming and hanging out. Um, I may do a stream tomorrow replacing that uh, that screen. I'm not sure. Um, there is a story about the screen though. Um, so it was about a week ago when I did the live stream and I was replacing a motherboard on a Dell Latitude and the replacement motherboard was worse than the original. Um, it, it didn't, it reacted worse. Uh, no video still. The, the problem was no video on the screen. Um, it turns out that the client broke the screen and that's why it was dark. Um, and the reason I didn't get video out whenever I plugged an HDMI cable in uh, into the laptop and I didn't get video on, on my monitor was because when the screen cracked, and I'm, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think when the screen cracked, it screwed with the uh, the connection to the motherboard, uh, from uh, the cable from the screen to the motherboard. And the one thing I didn't do was take off that uh, that connection and put it back. If I had done that, it, I still wouldn't have gotten video on the screen, on the laptop screen, but I think I would have got video on an external monitor, and that would have had me look more at the screen. The client didn't tell me that they broke the screen. I don't think they knew, but um, when I when I recognized that the screen was broken, I called them up and said, hey, this screen's broken, and that's why it's dark. Um, it works otherwise um, with the original motherboard. didn't even need the, the replacement, which turned out to be a, a, a whack replacement. It, it didn't work. And he said, yeah, when... Um, he was sitting at his chair and he reached down on the floor and grabbed the laptop by its screen and picked it up and that's when it went black. So I'm like, dude, why didn't you tell me that? That that would have had me look directly at the screen. And um, the thing about laptop screens, when you look at them, especially if they're matte, it's difficult to see that they're cracked. You have to kind of um, angle the, uh, the screen just right to light and then you can see it. But that got me looking at the screen. It is cracked. I got a replacement. So that uh, that needs to be done probably tomorrow morning. And I may stream that. I'm not sure. Um, I do have someone to go see in the morning. So it'll be late morning or early afternoon before I get to it if I, if I do stream it. I may not. It's just a laptop screen replacement at this point. But yeah, sorry. Um, little story there. Uh, I'll see you all in the next stream hopefully. Um, maybe tomorrow. Y'all have a good rest of your day or night or morning, depending on where you are in the world. Bye, everybody.